it's time to get started with the Bob White Quail Brooders. And here's the stuff that you're going to need to get started. You're going to need a tank for your uh, for your critters. Could, um, you also need some sort of a heat lamp. I just picked this up at Home Depot. The bulb that goes in it. Uh, some sort of a feeding uh, container. We've got the food. We've got the water. We've got uh, soil or sand. And uh, that's the basics to get you started. Maybe some string. First, let's start off with the brooder box. This is a glass tank. Now, uh, I like to use the glass tanks because they're pretty easy to clean, but they're not easy to move. Some uh, teachers are going to be bringing me their Bob White Quail, so you might want to think about what's easy to pick up and move with. Uh, I have some teachers that use a cardboard box that uh, certainly we can even put sand or, uh, or soil in that as well, but obviously it's not going to last very long before that bottom of the cardboard box rots out. And still other teachers who have probably put the most effort into uh, the Bob White Quail rearing uh, have used an actual baby's crib. So imagine that. <laughs> and they put, uh, I think they put straw or, or uh, some kind of a bedding down as well. Uh, that's not just cloth. But anyways, um, this lid here is from a saltwater tank and it has a few rust spots on it but it's still in good solid shape. So even though it doesn't look very pretty it's still very functional. And this is what I'll use on the top. It fits very securely just like so. As far as the uh, substrate goes you're going to want to use either sand or soil just going right out into your own backyard. Grab a shovel and let's go. <laughs> I've come back with some sand here and I'm going to put it right in our container. So, time to talk about uh, substrates again. I just put the soil into the uh, my brooder here and you'll see I have several inches of soil in there. It's got to be something non-slip. Don't use newspaper. Please don't use newspaper. And please don't use um, just the bare glass or bare cardboard. That's too slippery for the chicks. And uh, when they slip on that, their little baby ligaments are too fragile. And they'll actually stretch out and they'll have a debilitating condition that they won't recover from. So I didn't clean out any of the soil that I collected. I left in the plants and roots. Just look through to make sure there's nothing sharp that's going to uh, poke your chicks and cause an injury. But you want all the little bugs and creepy crawlies that are in there for them to eat. Okay, so with food, I went to Agway and picked up some chick starter mix. You can also get turkey starter mix, I've been told. Um, this bag here was $4.99. I like to buy the big 50 pound bags because it's more economical. And anyhow, the food is too coarse when you first get it though. The chicks are teeny and they're going to struggle with even these little crumbles. So what you're going to have to do is crush it up somehow. I do have a mortar pestle that I used to use, but I picked this up, this uh, handy blender, I picked it up at a garage sale for like a buck. So who cares if uh, what I'm blending in this thing. have coming out of this is a fine like almost like a cornmeal consistency of food very nice soft grains and that's what the chicks are gonna love to eat all right that and you want to go outside and pick some of these uh, white mustard plants you'll see them growing up maybe in your grass or your gardens and they love to eat the flowers and the leaves also I drop in leaves of romaine lettuce, red leaf lettuce, uh, chicory, and things, uh, vegetable scraps right off of my own table and put it right in there with the birds. They love all that stuff. Now also with food, you're going to need to teach them, as a good quail parent, how to eat some of the native foods out there. Some of the uh, roly-polies, earthworms, ants, spiders, and of course ticks. So any of that stuff can be put into the cages for them to eat. Not that I'm recommending putting ticks in with them. 
but uh, certainly a lot of the bugs get them to hunt and chase uh, after these things. I've even put mealworms in with them, as well as crickets from the pet store. As far as food containers go, uh, they probably won't be able to eat out of a deeper dish like this. So what I do is I put it in, I rummage my Tupperware uh, containers, and I'll put it in a flatter dish like this. Perfect. And then, what I use this dish for is the water. This right here is also a uh, food dispenser for the birds. It's much larger capacity. You can open this up, you can pour your food in, close it up, and then all these birds can eat off of it. This is what I use in my brooder outside, but in a small tank like this, it's too big. So I'm just going to use a dish like this. It's time for water. Now for water, in my brooders outside I use this big container like so. Outside, it's pretty easy to fill this with water. It holds a large volume of water. It'll last several days for the chicks to drink out of it. And then for this, you put it on, you assemble it upside down, believe it or not. Screw this on, and then Turn it over, and this will fill with water continuously. So as you drink it out, more will come out. It works really well for long term. But in a small setting like this, in a small cage, I'm just going to use the other side of my Tupperware, this side. And I'll fill that with some water. But first, you need to put something in there so they don't drown in the water. So they can access the water, but not drown in it. And for that, you need pebbles, or my favorite, marbles. Just going to put, put them in like that and then fill this up with water. And now they'll go into this, stand on the pebbles, peck at the pebbles and be like, oh, there's water in there. Hey, so one thing I'd like to talk to you about are thermometers. Now, it's important to have an accurate thermometer. So often I use two thermometers, sometimes of different types, just to make sure I'm reading the temperature accurately in the brooder. Just like you did with the incubator, using at least two thermometers to verify it. Uh, in this case, I have a nice uh, uh, metal thermometer uh, that's not going to break around the, uh, the chicks at all. And also, I have my handy digital thermometer. This is what I use with a lot of my reptiles, as a matter of fact. Putting this uh, uh, probe into the cage and you can read the temperature then from outside the cage, which is nice. You don't have to open the cage even to uh, read the Okay, temperature. now let's take a look at the bulbs. So uh, you got your nice red um, uh, incandescent bulb here for the, for the chicks. This is going to serve as their main source of heat. This right here is mama quail, and it's going to keep your little babies snugly warm in there, but we need to keep it, we need to measure the temperature because we need to keep it right at about 100 degrees, 98 degrees, right in there. So, um, so this has to be adjustable, and I'll show you how to do that in just a few minutes. Now, to put this bulb into something, um, you don't want to create a fire hazard in the school, so you need something that can handle that sort of heat and wattage, and that is a hood like this. This is a metal hood. I picked it up at Home Depot. Um, you want to have the clamp on it, so it can, you can hold it on to whatever it is you're going to do. And uh, I like to buy these with, um, the, they make them now with these red cords. I like that. But also with this handy switch on it for on and off. The, uh, the old school hoods that I have, uh, this is one I bought many years ago. It's still working just fine. But this has no switch on it. So in order to turn it on or off, you have to unplug it from the wall. Or if you have it in a power strip, you can click off the power strip. Okay, so we've got all of our parts together. Now it's time to put our brooder together. What I've done in uh, preparation is I've hung this rope here from a nail in the ceiling. It's a secure nail, and uh, I put several layers of rope on it here. It's just looped around and around and tied here, so it's not going to slip off the, the uh, knot. And I use this. This is my temperature adjuster, as a matter of fact. 
So what I'll do is I'll clip on my light right onto here. And now I'll click it on. And that red lamp is going to heat this, uh, this side of the tank. I like to heat about a, a third to a half of the tank. So the chicks can come here to get warm, go here to get cool, and they can start adjusting their own temperature just like they would with mama quail. Now, uh, this could be a fire hazard, so you're going to want to put this up. But now look at the, uh, the nice advantage of having this, uh, this rope here is that if you find that it's too cold and it's not getting up to 98 degrees, I can lower this right down to increase the temperature. You see that? And if it's likewise, if it's too hot, I can raise it up and cool it down. So, but you're going to want to keep your thermometers in there. And I'll put my digital thermometer right in, right in here under the light. And it'll reach right outside the tank. And this will tell me right when I'm at the right temperature, so I know where to, where to leave it alone. And I like to use these wire ties to uh, lock it into position. So once I have it right where I want, I'll just put this through. And tie it down. All right, so now it's set. Next, you're going to want to put in your food that you've already ground up. And I'll place this right in here. I'll mush it into the sand just a little bit so it's pretty much at ground level. And my water dish, if you remember the dish with the marbles, just get that in here. And any plants you want to put in for them to chew on, pick at. And I think we're set. Now it's time to uh, put our chicks in once the temperature is stabilized. Here's our lid. And put this on because in about, uh, I guess in about five days old, they can fly out of here. So you're going to want to put this lid on fairly soon, within a day or two of, re of putting your uh, chicks in. I just start right from day one, as a matter of fact, keeping the lid on uh, just so nobody escapes while I'm away. Thank you so much for participating in the Bob White Quail Project. I hope this video helps you set up your brooders and have a successful year raising Bob White Quail. Let me know if I can help you anymore.